if you're interested in growing, if you're interested in scaling a portfolio, a large portfolio, we're talking $100 million plus. If that's what you're interested in, you've come to the right place. Let's go. Hey everybody, Russell Westcott here. So hope you're having yourself a wonderful day. In this upcoming episode, I introduce you to a good friend, Mr. Brian Pullis, and we go deep into building a multifamily investment portfolio. So if you're interested in going from smaller single families into a large portfolio, and you're interested in making that leap of how to build a team, how to start working within a family business, it all started with one property. It all started with one single family family property, and it grew from there. And Brian and I dive headfirst into the topic of how to grow, how to scale, how to make this work within a family unit. This was a four-part video series that I stitched together for having a one continuous viewing experience. If you're interested in taking this from a hobby to becoming a professional, this will be a video that you will come back to often. So make sure you bookmark this video and subscribe because there are more videos just like this upcoming. All right, let's get after it. All right, guys, welcome back everybody to the Raising Capital interviews. And actually, I've, I've actually changed the name. I'm actually now calling them Standing on the Shoulders of Giants interviews. Oh, wow. Yeah, so, so we have some unbelievable giant shoulders that we're gonna be having a conversation here with. Wow. So um, before we get into introducing, you know, I consider Brian, probably one of the most interesting people in real estate. Oh, I really do. You. you know that that meme, the guy, the most interesting <laughs> man in real estate? I always consider Brian that. So one of my favorite movies of all time is It's a Wonderful Life, the old mm -hmm. Frank Capra movie. Yeah. And at the very end of the movie, and I'm sorry to say, I cry almost every time I watch it, mm -hmm. when he gets the book at the end of the gift, and inside the gift it's written in there, no one is a failure who has friends. Thanks yeah. for the wings, yeah. love Clarence. Yeah. Um, I consider myself one of the most successful people alive because I have amazing friends. Mm -hmm. And um, I would consider you a very good friend. Oh, thank you very and, much. And uh, so with that being said, everybody, this is Brian Pullis. Brian? Thank you. Thank you. Welcome to the <laughs> welcome to the interview. Thank you. So first of all, describe where we are. We're, you know, we're downtown Brampton. Obviously, yep. this is a corner office. Brian gave me this uh, wonderful uh, tour mm -hmm. of, of your facility here. And yep. it's, it's, a, it's a mini empire. It is. It is. Yeah. <laughs> like I'm how many people are working here now? Um, our team, I guess, there's about uh, 12 of us, yeah. I guess, in total. Um, and then we've got, uh, obviously, people in the cities of which we yeah. have properties in. So our boots on the ground. Yeah. And it's truly a family organization, top to bottom. It is. Um, yeah. Your daughter is here. Your, right. your wife is here. Yeah. Your son is going to be here very shortly. I should be interviewing him very soon, too. Maybe, yeah. maybe we need to get the next generation, That's the younger right. people, That's interviewed. Right. Yeah, what's, the brains of the operator. <laughs> what's yeah. going on? Um, so... I think we're in a really cool time for you, Brian, right now. You're, yeah. in, you're in a transition, if you will, mm -hmm. within the business. You've, yeah. you've come an, a long way. Now you're handing over the reins over to, to Kyle. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's a really cool time if we have this chance to sit down and, and have an interview. Yep. And uh, so maybe for people that don't know who you are, because this mm -hmm. goes nationally, it's actually going to um, North American wide to a lot of different people. Um, maybe just give the, the Coles Notes version about who Brian Pullis is mm -hmm. and where you've come from and maybe what, uh, where things are at today. Yeah, well, I mean, first and foremost is I'm a, I'm a dad, I'm a grandfather yeah. now, um, husband. Um, you know, we kind of lived in the, the Brampton area where our mm -hmm. office is here for, uh, oh, 35 years now, I guess. Yep. And uh, um, my, you know, my, my um, movement into the real estate investment world was really kind of perpetuated by, you know, just me being very unha unhappy with where my investment returns were, right. you know, back in the late 90s, uh, early 2000s. Um, and boy, am I glad that I, you know, kind of picked up those first few books and mm -hmm. started re researching this business model and, uh, and here we are, you know. What would have been the first, what was the first kind of... Uh uh, inflection point of maybe the book or what was the first uh, first one that you that would you would kind of attribute to the to the journey change uh, Robert Kiyosaki's book <laughs> yes. yeah there's been an awful lot of people yeah. that said the purple book has been the one that's, uh, that's changed, right. changed a lot of directions I yeah. actually mine was actually I saw Robert on Oprah 
Oh yeah, okay. Right, my original interview, yep. Yep. and that's where it started, so. Yeah, no, that's where it started is uh, reading his book. Um, but uh, I was a sponge at that time. I was picking up uh, any, any book I could uh, get my hands on. <laughs> Um, had a really good friend of mine, um, and have a really good friend of mine that's a real estate agent, and mm -hmm. um, him and I had many, many conversations on how do you know real estate investors get uh, more mortgages and so on. So mm -hmm. that's what kind of got me into it. So the bug got bit. When, when was that approximately timeline? Uh, that would have been in uh, 1999, year 2000, is when yep. I first wow. started to uh, to. Uh, pick up some books and start yeah. reading it. I didn't acquire my first property. Um, um, it's you know all about knowledge. Yes. I mean, so I wanted to make sure that I knew what I was doing and um, picked a lot of brains and went to a lot mm -hmm. of. Um, events, if I could find any. Rain mm -hmm. wasn't in Ontario yet at that yep. time. Um, and um, joined the Raymond Aaron group. Um, oh, yes, there's a couple, couple of people I've interviewed. Yeah. Raymond was, uh, Raymond's a, say what you want about Raymond. You know, That's right. He's made an impact. Exactly. In, in many Absolutely. ways, to, to, you know, say what you want. Right? Absolutely. A lot of people don't like his selling style, but he, yeah. he's been a, an, a catalyst for a lot of people's careers. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So, um, you know, and uh, yeah, I acquired my first property in 2002, which was a student house. Right. Yeah. So you can almost even joke that you uh, you got the bug, uh, you know, at the turn of the century. Mm-hmm. Yes, <laughs> right? yes. I, I make those jokes. This so when right. did you get started? Well, I've been investing since, or thinking about it since the turn of the century. <laughs> <laughs> That's a fun way of it. So your first uh, student rental, yep. 2002. That's right. Um, did you have the resources at your t disposal at that time to to take the plunge in? I did. Yeah, yeah I had a. I've been in business for myself since I was 23 years old. Yes. Um, had a furniture business um, that. Uh, we're doing refinishing of furniture and and then moved into um, uh, retail as well um, and very successful operation just uh, you know it was providing me with the cash flow mm -hmm. that you know I guess I'd always dreamt of but um, wasn't cre it wasn't creating the wealth right um, you know being in the retail business unfortunately to sell a retail store is very very difficult mm -hmm. um, because the, the the cost of entry, for an individual to get into a furniture store is very low. Right. Right. I mean, they just you know build a relationship with a furniture manufacturer, and they can start carrying the product and start selling it. So therefore, I knew that I wasn't going to be able to retire by selling my business, and I mm -hmm. had to start looking at other forms of investing. I mean, I was in you know I had a uh, a financial advisor that was helping me as well, but um, unfortunately, the returns that I was generating through the public markets just were incredibly unstable mm -hmm. and you know when when you get to know me you start realizing that i'm incredibly risk adverse right you know um i am looking for it's called wisdom it's as as a yeah it's, but, it's our it's our new hair color it's it's, <laughs> it's called wisdom l'oreal but wisdom by l'oreal right. <laughs> that's right and uh you know but i had that wisdom actually quite early on and it's like i just wanted stability yeah and uh, so you know and and actually i could kind of segue that into the real estate, I get mm -hmm. into real estate and start doing student housing. Yeah. Well, there's no stability in student <laughs> housing. <laughs> so well, that's where, you know, I, I then moved into, you know, multifamily. Right. Um, so, you know, with, um, yeah, so with uh, getting into uh, the student homes in 2002, mm -hmm. um, it was with my own, my own cash yep. that I had. Um, matter of fact, I was able to acquire uh, two student homes and a cottage at the same time. And okay. it was actually a book I think that I had read, um, I can't remember, uh, Allen, Robert Allen. Oh yes, I think Robert No Allen's Money book. Down. Yeah, no, but I think he, yeah, but I think there was a, a, a part in his book, now I, I could be giving him the credit, but maybe it was another <laughs> author, but somebody that I was reading at that time mm -hmm. talked about how if you wanted a boat, for example, yep. and the boat, you know, cost X amount of dollars and you finance that, mm -hmm. um, not that I'm big on financing boats, by the way, but if you were to finance yep. that, then buy a rental property that cash flows enough to make that to make Pay that payment, yes. right? Yep. So don't put your money mm -hmm. in the boat, put your money in the in yep. the asset that is basically gonna provide you the income to pay for the boat, right? right. So in that thinking, I thought, okay, well, I, I like that thinking. Yeah. And uh, so I ended up buying a cottage mm -hmm. um, that really has turned into my dream place. Right. I love absolutely spending time there. Um, but I bought that in 2002 and 
You know, and true enough, I mean, the two student houses that I purchased at that time were paying all the bills of this cottage. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Uh, do you still own those student houses? I don't. Yes. I uh, moved away from student <laughs> housing. You moved away from the, the headache and the pain in the butt of, of, of management of student housing. <laughs> yeah, actually, the instability of it. Ah, okay. Okay. It's the instability of it. It's that uh, the problem with um, that I was, you know, uh, I guess, experiencing with rental mm -hmm. properties or sorry, with um, student houses is that there's a certain period of time of which you have to rent out that that unit mm -hmm. in order to be able to get a year's rent right um, and if you miss that window you could be empty for four months throughout the summer months right, right? right. so the you know I mean that loss of income for those four months um, I mean, it would basically eat up my cash flow for yep. the year, no. right? So um, I it's didn't like changed that. changed a little bit. I see a lot of people that have, you know, systemized it now and they are getting some. But it is, it is a, it's a full-time commitment to, to manage that. And you have to be it prepared, is. right? Mm -hmm. And, uh, it, you know, it's not for the faint of heart to get into student housing. It's really nice on paper and cash yeah. flow. Some yeah. people, you know, fall in love with the romance of it mm -hmm. more than the actual doingness of it. Exactly, right. and and as much as I had a positive experience yeah. and I yeah. made you know really good money on those mm -hmm. on those rentals, I didn't see myself being able to scale that. Right. Right. Um, not with you know the, not with my personality, not with the way mm -hmm. I like to conduct business and and have a very organized tight yep. ship. Um, I found that to be a bit more challenging with mm -hmm. uh, with student housing mm -hmm. as opposed to say. Uh, regular rentals. Right. Okay. Now we're, we're going to, uh, I'm going to circle back here. We're going to talk about the first time that you hit the wall mm -hmm. of lack of not having your own investment capital and you went to whether it was family and friends. We'll come back to that. But mm -hmm. I wanted to just kind of book in the story. So 2002, the first student housing. Mm -hmm. um, let's just date this. It's 20, what is it? 2018. 2018. <laughs> 18. Yeah. Let's call it November. Yeah, <laughs> it's yeah. still beautiful out. The golf That's courses right. are still green. Um, What's the what's the portfolio looking like today? So mm -hmm. was that sixteen years? Right? Sixteen years, yeah. Now mm -hmm. um, it's a combination. I'd say the total value of the portfolio yeah. is somewhere in around the 80, 80 to ninety million um, is where the portfolio is right now. Yeah. That's a combination of um, uh, two investment funds that we are yeah. running right now. One is um, one is wrapping up this year, and uh, um, and some of those investors are rolling over into our second offering. Right. Um, but um, so there's a combination of, of that, which I call that more of our public, mm -hmm. um, you know, capital raise. Yep. Um, and then we have some joint venture partners on yep. some projects that we uh, that we own. And uh, then Kyle and I, um, or the family, has yep. um, its own portfolio as well. Wow. It's funny. It's one of the things that I, I often feel like one of my roles and one of my intentions and what things that I'm called to do mm -hmm. is, um, share i'm almost like an ambassador of possibilities mm -hmm. but i'm not just not my it's i'm not i'm actually bringing you to the people that are watching this but here here let's think about this from one student house in mm -hmm. 2002 that's 16 right. years later to a portfolio of 80 90 million that's that is incredible yeah right and that shows what can be done and and you, I know you well enough, you probably will say this, is that there was not, there's nothing extraordinary special about what you did, but you just right. put the boots on every day and went to work. Yeah, it's, right? um, you know, kind of Don's philosophy. Yep. It's actually um, just uh, Gary Peters, um, mm -hmm. who's been with me for a long time, um, you know, in, in, in all the business that I've ever been involved in. Um, him and I were just talking about this this morning as Don, mm -hmm. Don's phrase of the extra 10%. Yeah. Um, my phrase was a little different that I adopted from a family friend when, um, you know, he was successful in business. And this goes back to the uh, early 80s when I was in my early 20s. And mm -hmm. I'd keep picking his brain every time I'd see him at a family function. But his was is that, you know, whatever you do, whatever you get into, mm -hmm. do it at 150%. Yeah. And his philosophy was it didn't matter what you chose, mm -hmm. you know, because I was looking for the perfect business opportunity, yeah. right? They don't exist. And, <laughs> well, and they don't. And it's also based on, the, but that question is a bit subjective in the yeah. sense that what is your experiences and what are you good at and yeah. so on, right? So, um, so, you know, I guess I frustrated him enough that at one point he just said enough. He says, like, it doesn't matter what you pick. Mm -hmm. Just do it at 150%, yeah. and opportunity will find its way to your door. Yeah. And uh, wow. true enough. Yeah, you brilliant. Know, 
Right. You know, I often, you know, there's a big kind of thing floating around the internet right now. And so it's, well, what's your inner superhero and mm-hmm. things like that. Mm-hmm. And I, I often joke that my, my inner superhero, and I think you're very similar uh, vein of this is, and it's not a very sexy superhero. It's, it's Mr. Show Up. All we do is we just keep showing up. That's right. It's right? like, we show up, right? And we just, you just, you know, you get knocked down 10, get up 11, knock, get knocked down 11, get up 12. You're actually right? stealing my thunder when right? it's like, you know, when we start talking about the investment fund that we're mm-hmm. doing, it's, yeah. um, that's what I was told. Yeah. I was told by, you know, our marketer who, um, you know, is an, you know, an expert in the industry, of course, mm-hmm. um, that, uh, and, and has his pick of whoever he wants to. Yeah you know, choose to work with. And he says, your time has come. He says, mm-hmm. because you guys just keep showing up. Yeah. And, and you know, at the end of the day, it's the ones that never, never, that will, you can never beat somebody who won't quit. Yeah. You yeah. Really think about it. Mm-hmm. Right. So, so we've got every, me- we've got every meme, we've got all the cliches covered mm-hmm. now, yeah, yeah, yeah. everything <laughs> like that. So, so suffice it to say, in order to build a portfolio of 80, 90 million dollars, mm-hmm. uh, you had to learn a few things about raising some capital, mm-hmm. right? So, and I know you didn't start right into raising 10, $5 million yeah. at a time and things like that. You probably started with some inner circle of family and friends. So let's go back to what was your first, what you would consider maybe outside of family money that you first raised as a, as a joint venture partner or, or in a deal? Um, it was actually pretty early. So mm-hmm. um, I had bought the first two properties, I guess, on my own, bought a third property on my own. Um, and as I bought the third property, a friend of mine um, had approached me and uh, uh, who had been watching what I was yep. doing and um, had asked some questions. And he, he invested with me um, right from the very beginning. I, I'm going to say, though, that was probably the easiest money mm-hmm. that, that came to me. Well, that um, came, to see, the thing is, here's the point. It came to you. you that's didn't, right. You didn't seek it out. It nope. was just that he just came to you because he saw what you were doing. He saw right? what I was doing. Um, he also um, it was very close to me, so it was also mm-hmm. knew my business acronym yep. and knew how I conducted myself as far as businesses. So, therefore, it, was, um, it wasn't a far far stretch for him to mm-hmm. to trust me with his investment dollars right um and uh so together we bought a couple of properties very quickly yep. um which then presented other opportunities as well for my own portfolio mm-hmm. um that's still, came in, single, f- still single in single families and yeah single family i moved then. away from yeah. um so the first three were student houses yes. they were mine um and when i partnered with uh, the first joint venture partner um, it was my suggestion that we go to duplexes at that yep, time. Right. Um, and uh, so that's what we had done. And, um, and, and then I started building up a portfolio of duplexes, triplexes, fourplexes, and so on. Yep. And, you know, the experiences with the other joint venture partners all happened just organically. Mm-hmm. So rather than me being strategic about looking at um, raising dollars. I mean, it was strategic in the sense that I knew that I needed to kind of get out of my shell. Mm-hmm. Um, bit of an introvert, and um, <laughs> you know, so I needed to get out of my shell and 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 uh, and allow people the opportunity of knowing what I'm doing, mm-hmm. right? So that so that you know, with that with that information. I mean, I guess I've always been the type of guy that. When I come up with something great, mm-hmm. I like to share it with the world. Yeah, you know, I don't like to. I, I, I never consider myself the sharpest knife in the drawer, and mm-hmm. therefore, if I've come across this information mm-hmm. and if I can do it, so can you. Yeah, right. And so I like to share that information, but I like to share it in a way of let me help you get into this, yeah. as opposed to, you know, partner with me and let mm-hmm. me help you. Yeah with this. So it was always hmm. trying to teach people how to get into real estate yep. investing, of which many of them that would then come to the conclusion that they don't have the time or they don't have the acronym mm-hmm. or they just, you know, just aren't interested, yeah. right? And we could get into an entire, that's exactly my entire philosophy too, is teach people, show people everything you know. Mm-hmm. And some, so far, most of my investment partners have been the ones that came to the conclusion of, yeah, I think we'd, I'd be better off just giving that's it right. to you. Yeah. Um, and, and here's the beautiful thing, and you know, we could 
we could literally talk on securities until the cows come home. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, you have to stand in front of somebody and say, know thy client. How well do you know the client is here's right. here's a relationship I've mm -hmm. had with them. I coached them, I yeah. consulted with them. I did this, it's you know been six months or a year and here's everything I provided. And eventually they just became a client of an investment fund. Exactly. Now you can stand there in integrity and mm -hmm. you, you're well protected. That's right. Of knowing your client as opposed to, I put a Facebook ad up, somebody contacted yeah. me and no, next two weeks later, they gave me a hundred thousand dollar promissory note. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a, a recipe for disaster. Exactly. <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> All right. So, you had your first one, which then would have you know. Let me ask a side at that time because I know some of your story too. Were you still you had a sales consulting company and you actually had a coaching practice too? Were you doing that at the same time, or was the furniture business still still yeah. there? Yeah. No, I, I didn't have a sales consulting company, oh, right, but I okay. had. Um, I still had my furniture business, yes. but. In my late 30s, um, and I mentioned Gary Peters before, Gary P Peters had started working with me since he was like, you know, 19, 20 years old. Right. Um, and a matter of fact, I make the joke that he started his uh, first position with me was actually a stripper. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, a, I, I get a, it. I furniture, furniture, yeah. Yeah, furniture restoration <laughs> business. Right. And, uh, and he was hired on as a laborer to strip yeah. furniture. But, uh, <laughs> but anyways, years later, um, he... You know, he's a very smart guy as well and mm -hmm. uh, was able to move into taking over my company. Between him and uh, my wife, they were running all the day-to-day -day of the business, yeah. which gave me the freedom to be able to start researching and getting in, into, you know, kind of other ventures. So, right. um, so I still had that when I started getting into um, uh, real estate. Mm -hmm. um, just came to the realization though by 2005, 2006, that if I took all the money that was sitting on my floor as inventory, right. and if I put that in, in real estate, Mm -hmm. Okay, that I probably would do a lot better in the long run. And so here we are, right? right. So, um, but there was also some, some nuggets of information, I guess, that we were not impressed with as far as the furniture industry and the direction that it was moving, mm -hmm. uh, where a lot of product was now being knocked off in, uh, mm -hmm. in Asia and, and being brought over yep. at a fraction of the cost. Which is great for the consumer, mm -hmm. not so great for the retailer, because yeah. now I got to I got to sell three times the volume yep. in order to make the same amount of money. Right, you just keep getting right. squeezed and squeezed and squeezed. Exactly. And eventually, so. you know, not that you were a middleman, but in essence, that's what retail is: exactly. is you're a middleman of getting yeah. it from a manufacturer or distribution to eventual end consumer. That's right. Right. So it An was awful uh, lot of high overhead to to be a um, <laughs> to, to be tight to squeezed out margins. Exactly, yeah. and it was in that time that I uh, that when I I was um, winding down the store. Unfortunately, wasn't kind of the smartest move I had made. Mm -hmm. I had found out later, once I started coaching, that there was actually a market to sell my business. So uh, I could have sold it. Right. Um, but uh, we ended up going with, uh, um, you know, industry experts at the time and uh, where they uh, convinced us that liquidating would have been the better, right. better route. And uh, so we took that path. I, I mean, I have no regrets. I yeah. mean, but there is some, there is, there's a little, uh, Kind of spilt milk there, where uh, yeah. you know we did leave some money on the table, but um, I would but, imagine just even just the business acumen alone, and just taking the discipline and the rigors that you had of as an entrepreneur, and taking that into the realm of real estate, just elevated your game above everybody else. Everybody it, else was just doing it as a hobby and absolutely. just buying one or two places. Here, you bring business acumen, and you treat it like a business, mm -hmm. and you're now, geez, I want to put my money with Brian Polis because you guys treat it like an absolute business and not just a mom and pop shop. It, it, exactly, but I did have, um, I wasn't really seeking a lot of Mm -hmm. JV money. Mm -hmm. um, again, I was wanting it to come in organically. I didn't want to have to force any issues. Mm -hmm. um, I wasn't looking for, I wanted to make sure that um, as much as the investor was trying to gain knowledge as to how I did things and mm -hmm. who I am and can they trust me, um, the same was the other way around. I didn't want to partner with people that I knew that were going to be exhausting. Mm -hmm. um, so I was able to inform you know people right from the get-go that this is what I'm not and this is what yeah. I am. Yeah. So if you can work within that, then that's great. Yeah. You know, and but if you can't, then I respect the fact that you don't want to put your money with me. Yeah. Sometimes the the last decision criteria is actually the check mm -hmm. uh, that they can write the check. That's right. Because at the end of the day, you know, for lack of a better term, you're getting into a financial marriage. 
together, the good, the bad, and the ugly. And there's exactly. sometimes that are there's going to be cash calls. There's going to be things that go wrong. And That's right. are you able to work things out as as a couple? That's right. right. And, and different things there. Okay. Like I didn't want yeah. to rush into. You know, just because somebody was offering me their check didn't mean that I needed to take it. Yeah. So, and I learned that very young in business mm -hmm. is the ability to say no. Mm -hmm. You know, even though it seems like an incredible opportunity, the the cost to that yeah. could be devastating if not managed correctly. Oh, I some of one of the things that I learned early on too is to have a third party come with me to every meeting and mm -hmm. just kind of go because you know. When you're the deal guys, and we're you know you're you're a little bit different. I'm, I get excited around the deal. I'm, mm -hmm. I love I'm a deal hound. I want to just oh, yeah. okay. I get the idea and the, the yeah. f and then when yeah. you get cranking away and you have these ideas with people, you just want to just you're gonna global domination. That's right. right. Yeah. You just need somebody just as a third party just to kind of sit back and just kind of feel and analyze yeah. things. And that's why I bring Kareen out to most mm -hmm. of my meetings yeah. that I have with partners because I get her her intuition feel about it. Mm -hmm. And the only time I ever <laughs> did the deal when she said no, we could go on and on about <laughs> how bad that turned out so far. But so, you know, here's the, here's the tip is make sure you listen to your spouse. <laughs> right? so, so, so the next level of conversation we're going to dive into is when you started getting into, um, when you hit the wall mm -hmm. and started going into um, raising capital, mm -hmm. just the first joint ventures and then just past that. And then also when uh, the whole realm of multifamily and uh, and treating this like a big business, not just a mm -hmm. not just a hobby. So we're gonna be right back and just gonna get the cameras reset. So we're here with Brian Polis and we'll be right back. So Brian and I have just been sitting here in his beautiful corner office and you know, got all the awards <laughs> and all the hardware oh, yeah, lined up along the wall yeah. here. And you know, that doesn't come, that didn't come by accident. No, right? no. Um, I remember when would have been the first time that we we probably would have met. It'd probably be a, a more than a dozen years ago, oh, maybe yeah. even longer than that. And maybe in fifteen years ago, mm -hmm. pretty close. I think I started in rain in. She would have been maybe oh two, oh, oh four might have been. Oh four, yeah, oh well, five. I, I guess it would have been. Yeah, um, yeah probably oh four, oh five. Yeah. I joined rain in two thousand and. Three okay. when they first came to Ontario. Yeah. So I think I was at meeting meeting one or was it maybe from, meeting maybe two? from a Darren Weeks. Was it was it that same one that maybe like Jules no. joined? Oh, maybe just after that. Probably it was the one right after that. Okay. So which I believe was the top investment town maybe yeah. meeting or something. Where... No, I think it was actually Rain's first actual meeting okay. here that was going to be a regular thing. Mm -hmm. I think the uh, the meetings prior to that were um, kind of just testing out the grounds here and yep. and if they wanted to come here or not. And I think, um, you know, that uh, that decision was uh, uh, very beneficial for me. Mm -hmm. You know, it's um, it was interesting that, uh, um, as, as I mentioned to you, I'm looking at uh, kind of uh, uh, canceling my membership at rain i guess uh, mm -hmm. and uh but um it's w with a little uh with a little sadness mm -hmm. um just in the sense that um you know as you mentioned you know this operation that we've got going here and it's not lost on me that mm -hmm. had it not been for an org organization like rain with the with the great individuals that yeah. were you know kind of running rain and um you know the 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 members some of the some of the friends that have been able to make you know through uh uh, through that rain room is just incredible. Yeah. And uh, so with all of the like-minded individuals mm -hmm. there, that's the sum of this company. Right. Is, you know, is from having a place to, you know, just go and and, and, and kind of share your experiences and and learn. Yeah. You know, and I mean, as this we... This whole thing is lonely. It can be lonely at times. Oh, you're absolutely. There, you know, you sit there and go, yeah, there's everywhere there's a group this that and that. man yeah. you know back then there was nothing right and there was <laughs> nothing and but the incredible thing about the rain room mm -hmm. um and i have never been involved in any other so i don't know if this yeah. exists with all all yeah. groups so i can only speak about my experience but um the incredible thing with the rain room is that how giving your so-called competitor mm -hmm. is Right. I mean, if you want to look at it that way. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, there is no organization in the furniture industry yeah. where I could have went to and I can speak to my competitor yeah. and he could and he would actually assist me yeah. in the challenges that I was experiencing. Yeah. But with um, I mean, case in point, um, uh, Wally. Right. Wally Jensen. Wally Jensen. Yes. He um, was instrumental. I haven't heard that name for a while. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, before I had joined Rain, he was introduced to me by uh, by an individual that. Uh, 
was part of the Raymond Aaron group. Yes. And said, well, if you want to get into student housing, you got to talk to Wally. Mm -hmm. So me being incredibly shy, she gives me his phone number and it's like, now I had to call him, cold call him, right? Oh. And it's like, I don't know this guy, right? <laughs> yeah. And it's like, it was one of the hardest things I ever had to do, but I, I got mm -hmm. out of my way and I actually made the call. Yeah. And I mean, I was blown away with mm -hmm. the guy on the other end of that yeah. call, how, how, you know, how receptive he was to sharing with me his nuggets of information mm -hmm. to help me make the next decision, yeah. you know, and it was to invest in, in his neighborhood, invest where I'm investing, yeah. you know, and he, mm -hmm. he showed me, he told me where to go and who to talk to and, you know, and so, although that wasn't a rain experience, but mm -hmm. it was an experience in the sense that, you know, here's a competitor knowing, yeah. you know, giving me advice to set up shop, you know, kind of right down the street for him, so to speak, yeah. right? It's funny, I was just at a conference this weekend and there was a younger, there's an entire new generation coming in and this young fellow comes up and he goes, I can't just believe all these people that they're just so willing to want to talk to me and yeah. share everything. And I said, you, you want to know, the, the here's the truth and from my perspective is, it is lonely, yeah. and when you finally get somebody picking up the phone and want to talk to you, you can't wait to talk to somebody, because yeah. right? so, then you just want to share everything. Because yeah. it's just so it's so refreshing to actually have a conversation with somebody who gets it. That's right. Right. And I then, think that's that's it right there. It's yeah. so refreshing to be mm -hmm. able to, you know, provide some wisdom that's mm -hmm. going to create some shortcuts yeah. for individuals that are wanting to experience mm -hmm. what you're experiencing. Yeah. You know. And, one hundred percent, and I, mm -hmm. I'm a firm believer in if you want to hold yourself accountable and hold yourself account to taking action, talk to other people yeah. and and coach and consult mm -hmm. and share advice to other people. That's it right. holds you accountable to doing right. it yourself. Yeah, right. You know the old saying is here. Here's my adv here. Please take my advice. I'm not using it. Yeah. <laughs> right? So so it just holds you accountable to to keep moving forward. That's right. Right. And yeah. Brilliant. Okay, so in in the in the journey um, here, we've we've uh, you've uh, the furniture business is gone. Mm -hmm. The student housing you had a few of those there. You've raised some capital from other people. People keep coming to you. Just you just keep building your infrastructure and keep building your business. Mm -hmm. When was the uh, when was the light bulb moment to get into multifamily investing for you? Again, it was kind of organic, right? Yeah. Where you know I was buying. Uh, duplexes, triplexes, yep. and then an opportunity presented itself for a, um, <coughs> excuse me, a commercial building where it was a bakery on the main floor and there was um, five apartments above. Um, so that would have been my first kind of step into uh, something larger than a duplex, let's say. That's mm -hmm. uh, something that is financed commercially. Um, and um, that one was bought on my own. I purchased mm -hmm. that one on my own. Um, you know, I, I guess my story is, you know, there's a lot, there was, I was able to purchase some properties on my own, mm -hmm. which really, really helped yeah. with building credibility, mm -hmm. you know? Um, so, and so that kind of helped me then get into multifamily yeah. as well, right? So by, uh, I bought, uh, when I actually liquidated my furniture business, I went, went on a bit of a buying spree there and ended up buying uh, uh, this, this building I'm speaking of, yeah. as well as two fourplexes that were side by side. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, they were built in 2002, so they were actually next to new. Uh, where everything else I was buying was actually quite old. Um, so that's kind of where I kind of get started getting into uh, multifamily and started seeing how, you know, it's just, you know, it's just the same as right. everything else I'm doing. It's a matter of fact, a little easier in some ways, a mm -hmm. um, little bit more difficult in others, but um, nothing, Right. you know, incredibly challenging. So is your primary business model to buy underperforming multis um, renovate them, bring up rents, and then just recapitalize, refinance, and you know, and then just wait until the cows come home, <laughs> if, you, if you will. Yeah. What, what, or should I say, send me putting words in your mouth, what is your primary business model? So, I mean, if we talk today, yeah. it's, it's, it's incredibly focused, it's incredibly refined, yeah. um, and incredibly boring, <laughs> okay. right? And, and I love it that way, yeah. right? Um, Whereas in the beginning days, it was the same model, just not quite as refined. Okay. Um, so over the years, we've just continued to, you know, kind of refine the model. Um, and, you know, it, it was 
All happening or happening organically, like I say, mm-hmm. um, I keep using that because I wasn't pushing this. Um, mm-hmm. I didn't see real estate investing as a um, a company that I was going to have, which would have the staff that I do and the family working for it. Mm-hmm. It was really just a way for me to supplement my retirement. Mm. And so I started getting involved in business coaching when I closed down my furniture store. Um, and that was a, a, an amazing experience. I really mm-hmm. enjoyed um, you know, working with a lot of the clients that I worked with. And it was there that I started having some light bulb moments that, mm-hmm. you know, man, have I been cutting myself short as far as, um, you know, the, you know, it, it's unfortunate that some people learn in their late 40s, mm-hmm. early 50s yeah. of the you know, of the God's gifts that uh, they've been given. Yep. And where, you know, we all are brilliant in certain ways. And unfortunately for me, it was late in life when I really started to see, you know, where my, um, where my, my, my best use of time is. Right. Right. And, um, you know, so, and that's when things really took yeah. off for me. And in one of our previous phone calls, and I was actually, thank you for being vulnerable and sharing this with me. And, and, um, you know, here, here people are probably sitting there going, you know, look, Brian, he's, you know, 16 years and 90 million. I'm going to just, I'm going to keep rounding out. It'll be a hundred million by the time we're done. <laughs> you know, Kyle's out there probably right now acquiring a property or two. So, so uh, uh, and people just say, well, he's got it all figured out, right? Yeah. He just knows everything, right? He's mm-hmm. just, you know, it's got it all figured out. But you, you shared with me that when you first got into this, you, you, you didn't, you don't recognize the person then that you are now. Absolutely. And you, you couldn't even walk up to a person and you didn't have the skill set to even come close to this. So, so maybe just share people a little yeah. bit of that whole evolution as a business person mm-hmm. for you has been, because this is a business in real estate, right? So. Yeah, I mean, to share one story, I think that really kind of defines it all, mm-hmm. right, is my parents were immigrants to this country mm-hmm. and they, my dad was um, educated. He was an air traffic controller actually in, um, in Malta where he was uh, born and raised. Um, when he came to Canada, unfortunately, that education and those skills weren't recognized here. Mm-hmm. And it was just after the Second World War, so therefore, you know, kind of air, air traffic controllers were a dime a dozen, yep. so to speak. And so education was incredibly important to them. And unfortunately, their way of communicating that, I mean, their intention was all good, yep, yep. but unfortunately their way of communicating it though, um, you know, could have, been, could, have, could have been improved on, right. right? So unfortunately in my, you know, for as long as I can remember, um, you know, I thought stupid was my second name, right? And <laughs> With the back, did you have the back end? Oh, yeah, that was, that was my mom. She, was, she had the back end. And my yeah. dad would joke is, do you want, do you want instant <laughs> death or do you want slow <laughs> agony? Right? Because he was right handed. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, you know, and so as I got older, it was the reference to yeah. school yeah. always was that if you, if you weren't educated, you're mm-hmm. stupid. You, mm-hmm. If you weren't educated, you're a dummy. If you weren't educated, you're, you're lesser than, right? right? And so, so here I now am a teenager and, you know, I'm, I'm walking around with those beliefs, mm. right? And so I, I got my grade 12, of course, and uh, then uh, took some, um, I mean, I enrolled in college, but um, ended up dropping out when I realized that I was going to have to live at home that much longer had I, you know, went to school. Mm-hmm. And um which, uh, which you know, I mean, you know, it is what it is, right? Yeah. So um, I took uh, night school courses, uh, night school business courses, and uh, uh, that was that was very beneficial. But here I now am building my businesses mm-hmm. and doing very well in these businesses, but not realizing. I mean, I did realize, of course, that I was shy and I was mm-hmm. introverted and so on, and I had a bit of a chip on my shoulder, but didn't know where the chip came from, and right. certainly didn't, you know, realize, you know, that I was carrying around this luggage with me. And now here I am in my 40s when I finally was working with a tremendous uh, business coach, um, Mm -hmm. Stephanie Handlin, and she helped me uncover this this chip Mm -hmm. on my shoulder where I was, you know, putting people with educations on a pedestal Mm -hmm. and not really realizing my contribution 
to that discussion, whatever that discussion wow. is. And uh, so, so that really, you know, when we worked through that, that was a real light bulb moment for me. And it's like, um, you know, it's interesting. Today, I'm dealing with all of those professionals and in many cases, giving them advice. You know, and uh, and it's not lost on me. At times, I kind of leave a meeting and I, you know, go chuckle. and say to my wife, and it's like, you know, I just had one of those moments again, right? Yeah. And we both just have a little chuckle. I mean, we've been married now for thirty six years, so she's watched me grow up. Yeah. <laughs> well, and, and here's the point I'm trying to get to: is a lot of people that are, are I, I'm doing a lot of coaching with um, early thirties, like mm-hmm. people just getting in and and things like that, and everybody is. Everybody thinks that everybody else has things figured out. That's and, right. And, or they think that, you know, I'm 32 and I've only got 11 houses and, and uh, it should be going faster for me. Yeah. Like there's just no patience, mm-hmm. right? So, mm-hmm. so Brian's here to tell you is you didn't get some of these things figured out until mid 40s. No. And no. you're only 47. Yeah. Right? <laughs> <laughs> you know, no, it's like, I mean, I mean, again, I've always done well in business. Yeah. I've always had, I guess, a bit of a gift where, um, I can see things, Mm -hmm. you know, in the sense that I can see the path I need to be taking in a business and just take that next step. Um, And, you know, and and I mean that in a way that I I find that a lot of people um, maybe overcomplicate, you know, things and um, uh, therefore have a little bit more difficulty because they're they're complicating it. But it was just always just one step at a time, just Mm -hmm. put the next foot in front of the other and just and just build. And um, so I, I had successful businesses. Getting in the coaching was was also very successful. Mm-hmm. Um, I've reinvented myself really probably three times. Right. Um, and um, you know it's been wonderful. And it's the interesting thing is is that as you get into the next chapter mm-hmm. of your life um, and reinvent yourself again, you basically say, "Wow, all the experiences mm-hmm. that I had in the first one in, is making this possible." Yeah. And that isn't stopped here. Yeah. You know. And I think it, I'm, I'm a firm believer that if you ever want to go to the next level in whatever you're doing, you actually first have to, you have to become a new person in order mm-hmm. to get to that level. Yeah. Right. It's, it's one thing to say it and it's one thing to, you know, be aspired to get to it, but you mm-hmm. actually have to do the work on yourself right. in order to get there as well. Okay. Yeah. Well, actually just opened up a, a, a level of conversation and here's some of the things I'm loving about these interviews I'm doing is, is um, sharing the wisdom of people who have, you know, 16 years later, Brian's an overnight success, right? <laughs> <laughs> 16 years later of, of mm. blood, sweat and tears yep. and, and, and we can both <laughs> attest to a few hair follicles That's lost right. over, the, over yeah. the course of time, um, some more than others. <laughs> um, what would you, you know, I'm sitting here and, and you're like giving advice to somebody just getting into real estate now mm-hmm. and they're um, cutting their teeth and they're looking to raise some capital now and, and times have changed, mm-hmm. right? I, I'm, I'm, I'm here to say that we, we don't have it all figured out of this whole day and age, man, things are going so fast yeah. and quick. And, but fundamentals are fundamentals mm-hmm. when it comes mm-hmm. down to it. So what advice are you giving to uh, people just getting started to you know, build your track record, build your credibility as somebody maybe just getting started now? Great question. And, you know, it's interesting. I had this, this same conversation on a long drive from a fishing trip yesterday with a, with a really, really close friend of mine. Now, this friend of mine has um, done some real estate investing, has purchased some houses, also owned some businesses. Matter of fact, we were business partners in the furniture uh, business that I had had. Um, and my advice to him was, because he's, he's considering retirement, and he's looking at what that picture would look like, and um, he'll be still relatively young. He'd be in his uh, 60s when, or early 60s when he retires, and kind of a little concerned that he's going to be a little bored and mm-hmm. kind of doesn't like the kind of fixed income uh, part of that either, and would like to still be involved in things that perhaps could uh, could really uh, turn things around, or not turn things around as much as make things a bit exciting yeah. for him at that time. So we talked about what he needs to be doing today. Mm-hmm. So, you know, the, what you're going to be doing as far as what you're going to be investing in and, and um, what your model look like and, and all of that is, to me, secondary. Right. Right? The, the first part is educating yourself, which is really part of, by educating yourself, you'll quickly then find out what it is you're going to be acquiring as mm-hmm. far as buildings and so on. But it's now getting out there and sharing what you're learning right. with 
the you know with the people that are around you mm -hmm. and because in my experience if this is our first conversation and you're sitting there and you're saying wow i really like what i'm hearing here yeah okay it's probably going to be two years so before you're actually going to invest with me right you see because the average person takes well first off i learned two things seven touches mm -hmm. okay um, which basically means seven touches basically means that we need to see each other. Yeah, and, and that's, seven, so you're just talking, to, essentially you're talking in a marketing sequence. From, exactly. From initial lead to eventually a person um, a converting to an investor. Exactly, right. and and rather than saying lead, because yeah. that can um, refer True. to the yes. fact that, um, you know, you actually came with that intention. Right. It's the first conversation. Right. So okay. I could be at a barbecue party. I could be, you know, I could be anywhere right. and just have a conversation with somebody mm -hmm. and they say, wow, I really like what you were just saying there. Yeah. Right. And I'll always ask, you know, let me know if you'd like to learn more and mm -hmm. I'll send you an email with some, so yep. with some information. And that will usually, people will say, yes, definitely send me that information. Yep. Okay. Um, but the, you know, the whole thing is though, is that um, doing it organically and just by basically sharing the information with others, mm -hmm. people will usually then ask questions. Right. And then what you just do is you just have a servant's heart and you want to serve what's best mm -hmm. for them mm -hmm. and without any intention. That's Your right. intention is to help. That's right. And lo and behold, through conversations, this is just, it, it happens like gravity, lo and behold, through because you're probably just as happy if that person you have that conversation with goes and does it himself. Oh, exactly. Because it, that's the end of the day, you want them to win. Exactly. As a matter right? of fact, this friend that I'm talking yeah. about, and I, I said that to him. Yeah. I said that to him yesterday. Yeah. I said, do you not remember our very first conversation yeah. or several conversations about real estate investing? Yeah. He says, like, I wasn't looking for you to invest with me, although mm -hmm. I knew that that could be a possibility. Mm -hmm. I knew that that might be something that where you may say yeah. that, hey, I'm pretty busy with my day job yeah. and I don't have the time. I says, but no, you chose chose to go and do it yourself, which yep. was fantastic. And yes. I've always supported you in that, yep. right? And so, so the whole messaging to him yesterday was really about, you know, positioning yourself now yep. to be able to be the professional that you need to be to, in order to be able to receive the money, yep. you know, when the individual is ready. Right. So it's about, you know, so by having those conversations today with these people yep. and understanding it takes seven touches. So I need to see you seven hmm. times and have these conversations perhaps yeah. seven times because sure you, you you were interested in what i said last time yeah. but you walked away and had now more questions right and you didn't quite feel comfortable to pick up the phone or, e or email yeah. me and i'm not following up because i'm not pushing this relationship i'm yeah. looking for you to push the relationship yeah. and so you know and i and as I, and i've actually had that conversation with people including my own sister i remember one time you know, and, and she, I think she found it a bit amusing. It's like I said to her, I'm not going to call you. Yeah. Right. So, you know, if I don't hear from you, then I, I'm just going to assume that you weren't interested. And yeah. that's fine, too. Yeah. Right. And she didn't, <laughs> you know, yeah. and but but that's OK. Yeah. It's like is, um, you know, I, I just used to spell out what the next step is going to look like. Wow. Right. So so to, to really just bookend what, what you're, you're really saying is. You know, the advice you use is advice you've lived mm -hmm. is is um, slow down, take the time. And it, it takes time. It takes the time it takes Yes. for number one. And, and I use the analogy quite often whenever I have these conversations is, um, so first of all, here's a master chef that's handed you a chocolate cake recipe. Mm -hmm. The best chocolate cake mm -hmm. in the world. The right ingredients, the right dash of this, just from all the experience you've had, you've perfectly handed everybody a recipe for success. Yeah, don't mess with it. <laughs> don't mess with it. But here's the thing. A lot of people want to go, well, I want it quick. I want it. And the, and the thing says 400 degrees for mm -hmm. 30 minutes. If you crank the temperature up to 700 degrees, doesn't mean it's going to be cooked in 10 minutes. Exactly. It still, it still yeah. takes that amount of time for it yeah. to, to, to bake. You know, I think, um, though, where the conversation needs to start for an mm -hmm. individual is, and I played this exercise exactly with this friend of mine mm -hmm. yesterday, and that is, is that what do we, what does the end of the day look like? Right. So what are you looking for? Mm -hmm. Is it to just have something to do? Mm -hmm. Okay. Because if it's just something to do, then you might not necessarily need to get a joint venture partner. Yeah. And if you do, maybe that building would be a little different than um, if you're looking at mm -hmm. uh, creating an income. Yeah. 
Paul, that's no different than everybody should, no matter where, what phase you are in your life, you need to ask this question. Because I, I have multiple conversations with people in their early 30s that um, the investing needs to fit with your lifestyle, mm-hmm. for one. Like they sit there and they go, they both have careers, they both have and the small family and children. And then lo and behold, they want to go out and tackle the uh, condo conversion project of something right. like, that just don't work. Right? Yeah. You have to also, it has to fit within your lifestyle. So an option could be as to a smaller turnkey property mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. you maybe, or even just a fund, no different yeah. than what you guys offer here. And you know, and I don't know the returns and yeah, things yeah. like that, but, but it might be better off with less time and effort to write a check over to somebody and get a 14% return on their money yeah. that way, because you don't have the time to take on that. Exactly. And that's where it's so important to, you know, kind of sit down yeah. with um, perhaps an individual that um, that has, uh, you know, some business acronym to be able to sit down and, and kind of define what it is you're looking to to mm-hmm. build. Yeah. So is it something and where, where this here has a bit of a you know bone of contention for me is, mm-hmm. you know, watching real estate investors get into this business with the intent of very quickly getting to a point where they're doing it full time. Right. And as much as there's some success stories of Mm -hmm. how that's worked, um, there's a whole number of train wrecks that we can talk about that uh, that didn't work. And it's because they were, and, and notice in my language, you know, I keep using that organic, organic, yes. organic, right? Yeah. Um, I had the business experience, which was fortunate for mm-hmm. me, of knowing and watching individuals and not just real estate investing, but in other businesses where they're, you know, kind of, where they're, where they're, where they're growing way too fast. Yep. And they're not, they're, 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 they're not kind of backfilling and putting in the proper infrastructure to be able to handle the weight of what they're doing. That was the biggest mistake I made uh, investing. This was adding way too many properties way too quick without having, without having the back end infrastructure to support it. And you know, to be honest, the only thing that was supporting it was a market that was rising at extremely yeah. fast rate. Mm-hmm. And so uh, I thought I, <laughs> I had it all figured. Well, I had it all figured out. The market was going up, making a whole bunch of money left to right. Keep refinancing, keep pulling equity out, keep investing over here, and just you know. Buying more is not a symbol that you're actually being successful. Exactly. Because right? yeah. because it's it was a it's a house of cards yeah. in in some respects. And I've you know I don't have to go hash into many of the big mistakes I've made along the way, but there's been mm-hmm. a lot of them. Um, all right, so I'm going to just do another real quick recap, uh, a reset of the cameras. And the next segment, what I want to, us to dive into a little bit about the business model that you have of you know your apartment buildings. Um, mm-hmm refurbishing and getting that but but I want to talk about raising I want to transition from somebody who's maybe got started maybe somebody now has got 25 places mm-hmm. and now they're maybe considering getting into public money okay. and everybody wants to everybody thinks it's all sexy and <laughs> fun and you know I'm going to just go out and I'm going to put on events and wine and cheese diners and yeah, mixers yeah, and mingles yeah. and, and I'm just going to raise money from the from the public yeah um, I imagine there's a few stories we could talk around uh, around that transition from making the leap into raising capital yeah, my, from the I, public I guess my sarcasm yeah. would say good luck with that yeah good, exactly it's like um, so yeah that uh, that's a conversation in yeah. itself of course and yeah. I'm Looking forward to kind of well, sharing we'll start that the, with We'll you. start the primer. We'll, we'll okay. get people, we'll give some people things to consider before making the transition, if they're ready to make the transition. Some, the answer might be is maybe the answer is let's just keep going joint ventures and keep the road you're going. Who knows, right? But there is some consideration for there. Absolutely. Okay, so we'll yeah. just reset the cameras and we'll be right back. All right, then we're back. <laughs> Ryan, man. <sighs> Here, here's what's coming out of a lot of these. And guys, if you're watching many of these interviews, you, you can already tell that a lot of these interviews are turning into potential multi-parts. And, and, and a good interview will always leave more to be asked yeah. after the fact, too. So, so um, thank you once again for the invitation to here to opening up your beautiful office and your um, and I know if we had enough time and coordinated we probably would have done it up in your cabin in yeah your, in your <laughs> your Belize property I imagine Absolutely. that is your Belize it is, yeah. uh, well, describe it for for everyone here for the, and this is the place you bought in 2002 it is it's is, actually I got a really really I, I'll try to keep it short for you yes. but it's a really incredible story um, in my uh, when my when I was about eleven, my yes. brother was my brother was born, and my parents purchased a trailer 
um, to put in a trailer park mm -hmm. and be treated as our cottage. Yeah. Um, and the reason why my, it was with my brother is simply because now there was five kids and not enough room in a car to be yeah. kind of traveling all over Canada as we, uh, as we did before then. But um, so they, they put this trailer in a trailer park in Midland, Ontario, and I somewhat grew up there. And so as a kind of 10, 11 year old, 12 year old, my dad and I used to go trolling. We used to go mm -hmm. fishing. Yeah. And Occasionally, we would go around the bend, is yep. what I call it, right? And it's really only about a kilometer away from yep. from uh, from where the trailer park was. But um, we would troll around the corner, and only able to go there on the really, really nice summer days yep. when it's calm. So as we would be going around this corner, I'd be looking at this cottage, and there was one. It was early '60s, or sorry, early '70s at that time, um, and there was this cottage that was just being built. Yep. And it was huge to me. I mean, mm -hmm. it was, you know, a two-story cottage. Um, and, um, you know, keep in mind, I was growing up in a 950-square-foot, you know, bungalow mm -hmm. uh, with an unfinished basement and five kids in it, right? right. So, um, and, um, you know, so, but my parents did an amazing job of trying to give us everything, and mm -hmm. including the trailer and the boat and everything else, right? So, so here I was experiencing every now and then going by this cottage, and I would see kids playing outside, and and I would just, you know, take it, soak it all in, yeah. right? So, um, anyways, um, thirty years later, I'm looking at buying a cottage. By then, my dad had moved away from there, and um, you know, he uh, and then we bought our own trailer, and we were up in Honey Harbor, which is about twenty minutes from there, mm -hmm. from Midland, that is. And we started looking for, for a cottage, yeah. and uh, we ended up buying this one in, in Midland. Mm -hmm. Two years after I bought it, I'm sitting on the deck, and I see this old man going by with his uh, kid fishing, and I thought, oh my, my dad and I used to do that. Yeah. And I started quickly going up and down the shoreline looking for this cottage. Mm -hmm. And as it's happening to me right now, which you can't see, but yeah. goosebumps went all over my arm when I realized I bought it. I actually am you didn't in realize the cottage. It was. No, because when I bought it, I bought yeah. it from the road. Yeah. I drove. Yeah. When I came to see it yeah. for the first time, I came from the road, not from the water. As a kid, I was always seeing it from the water. Right. Right. And and obviously everything had changed in that area by then. This was no longer a big cottage. It was mm -hmm. just a, you know, a thousand square foot cottage. I mean, it was a big enough cottage, yeah. but uh, wasn't as big as everything else wow. was in that uh, in that area now. So. Talk about manifesting. Oh my God, yeah, yeah. yeah well, yeah. I'll tell you what, um, I, I just had flashbacks of, it's amazing how clear life can get trolling mm -hmm. with a fishing rod in your hand <laughs> yeah. and nothing else to do other That's than right. just to be just to be yeah right yeah. and just those precious moments and those those are the mm -hmm. those are the moments that we you know at the end of the day those are the ones that we will remember yeah. more than more than a piece of real estate you bought or the mm -hmm. duplex or the student house and those are all wonderful yeah. those are those are just keeping score exactly but it's those moments yeah. right yeah. that you can actually share with uh, and I imagine you and Kyle and your your new your family is having a awful lot of these right. maybe the boat's a little bigger and yeah, the, yeah. it's got speakers on it now and it's Wi-Fi or something that's right. that's skiing. Yeah, yeah. And so, no, like, it, it's a great place. Yeah. My, my daughter Brittany's up there all the time with yeah. her boyfriend as well. And, and Kyle's there with his uh, young family now yeah. and uh, our little grandson Benny. And you're yeah. just having a you know amazing time up there. Uh, yeah. And that's all been afforded by real estate, if by you really estate. think about it, right? Uh, like as I yeah. shared with the story, I, I yeah. purchased the cottage with the cash flow that yeah. was being generated by the two uh, student houses that I first acquired. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Well, I don't know how to transition into raising <laughs> a public capital after that, but we yeah. might as well just do it, right? Yeah. So you've now, uh, the part of the story we're going to share is you've, you've, you know, bought properties, you've, you know, you've raised capital to joint ventures, you've, you probably maybe did, um, and I probably get some of the terminology wrong, and please feel free to correct me. Maybe you did a first offering memorandum mm -hmm. with things, and then you started putting together um, a fund. Yep. A limited, is it a limited partnership? Limited partnership. An LP, yeah. okay. Um, would you do that again? If knowing now what you know now, would you go that same route? Or, or so let me ask the first question. Um, what is the process to, to kind of get there and, and just a really high level? Thing, and would you do things a little different now in today's day and age, uh, knowing what you know now? If I knew what I knew now, 
and know the the the, the challenges that you'd mm-hmm. be facing, then perhaps I would have been discouraged and maybe not got into it in the first place. Right. Um, but I am incredibly grateful mm-hmm. that I didn't have that that knowledge. Right. And that was you were jaded to, or, or or dissuaded from doing it. Right. That's right. But I also have, you know, an incredible work ethic mm-hmm. that I'm not given up. So. Right. Um, I don't rely on you bringing me the groceries Mm -hmm. for me to have dinner. Right. I may hire you to bring me groceries, but if you're not bringing them, I'm still Mm going to go and kill my own, you know, right? Dinner. It's like, I'm not going to starve because you didn't bring it. So, and the reason why I'm saying that is that raising money, um, you know, when you now are going out to the public to raise Mm -hmm. it can be very, very challenging yeah you know um there's an there's an incredible amount of securities laws that you have Mm -hmm. to um to be mindful of um there's a lot of um there is a lot of kind of um you know contracts and 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 there's you know most of my time is actually dealing with raising capital dealing with lawyers dealing with accountants and and probably not real estate it's probably more around the whole thing about protecting everything and disclosures of everything, yep. and not actually the doing of it. Well, you know, exactly. The doing what you love, right? Well, exactly. And it's like, it's fortunate that, you know, we have this great team where, mm-hmm. you know, my son and I are, um, you know, as much as we're best friends, we're also, you know, great partners, mm-hmm. you know, where we complete each other. And yep. um, uh, many, Many have called us the gas and the break, right? Where right. you know he's the he's the gas and wanting to move the company forward, mm-hmm. which is fantastic. And I'm the break, which is you know basically slowing that down yep. a little bit so that we can you know continuously backfill and make sure that we have mm-hmm. at the the support that we need to carry it. Yeah. Um, but you know it's I don't you know when I get people asking me questions about real estate I have to I have to be honest with them it's mm-hmm. like I'm a bit out of date now when it comes yeah. to some of these things it's mm-hmm. that I don't really deal in real estate I deal in the business of real estate but not real estate right right um, you know so when it comes to you know where to buy a property and and, and so on that's not really my forte right well, now that's what you have other people that's that's it. right and that's the mantle that Kyle's taking on Absolutely. he's kind of in charge of acquisitions he's You're in, in charge. charge right now actually yeah. he's moving into kind of taking over everything Um, um, with me, you know, overseeing some areas, of course, Mm -hmm. and still having, um, I mean, I'm still a part of the business, don't get me wrong, but there's an, there's a lot of what I'll call special projects Mm -hmm. that are, um, that are needed in in, in our business as we're growing. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you know, and I'm, I I love doing that type of thing. And, um, and it's incredibly important for, for the team and for him. So. And is your primary business model today, it's, it's buy undervalued, renovate, uh, recapitalize and rent out at market rate. And then just, that's the, absolutely. And and just keep steady as she goes. That's right. We buy apartment buildings that were built primarily in the sixties and Mm seventies that haven't seen renovations since then. Yeah. Um, original owners, probably original, original owners. builders. Yeah. They're just looking to yeah. get out and yeah, and purchase from individuals that are primarily unsophisticated real mm-hmm. estate uh, investors. Yeah. Um, some of them are just ma and pa. Yeah. Uh, many of them are ma and pa investors that yeah. really don't have the interest or mm-hmm. the sophistication to be able to learn about the landlord and tenant laws and right. how to work within them. Right. Um, and so, therefore. There's a tremendous amount of opportunity in these buildings to take them, you know, t- with their current use. Mm-hmm. And although the use is the same in the sense that it's still a residential multifamily property, the tenant and their affordability of, of a unit is is dramatically increased with our improvements. Right, right. Okay. That makes sense. Now, from the from the standpoint of, obviously, money is needed to buy these places. Mm-hmm. So I, I imagine... I'm not going to put the words in your mouth. You can you can correct me if I'm wrong. You know, always the first place you always do is go to the banks yep. and find out how much the banks will lend mm-hmm, commercial mm-hmm. wise. Then the next is there's, there'll be a shortfall based upon what you need to to actually buy it, and then also to do some renovations mm-hmm. to reca- to get it up to the to the polis standard. Yep. Right. So there's obviously going to be a gap of money there, mm-hmm. and let's just say, you know, for lack of numbers, let's just say it's. Seven million. Mm-hmm. So now you're you're seven million dollars mm-hmm. short to acquire this next asset. You have some 
funds. Now, how do you how do you go about today raising that seven million dollars? What's what's the process? Well, okay. So first off, it's done a little differently for us yeah. than than what you described. Okay. Again, good. Please. You know, my my theme song today is organic, organic, organic. Yes. Right. So, um, I had probably about twenty five. So I I, I got to give you the whole story if yeah, you don't please, mind. Please, please. Right. Um, so, lots of time. Um, you know, I I, had right, about, I, I shouldn't have keep inviting myself here for <laughs> lots of time. I'm sorry. I, I'm, I'm, I'm putting words in Brian's mouth here. You're going, you got to get out here in about a half an hour, Ross, by the way. <laughs> so I, I had about 25 properties, I guess, and I was doing uh, real estate investing. Mm -hmm. I had maybe about, uh, sorry, I was doing uh, business coaching. Yeah. Um, I had a, probably four or five joint venture partners mm -hmm. that um, owned part of those 25 properties that I had uh, accumulated. Um, and I was doing it with relative ease. Mm -hmm. um, I always hate the question is what was your biggest challenge? Because, you know, quite honestly, without sounding arrogant, I really never had a major challenge in real estate oh, investing. Oh, that's intentional though, that's by design. Well, it's probably because I had a tremendous amount of challenges in the furniture industry. Maybe so, <laughs> well, maybe I it, paid my on, dues there. On so. the other hand, if someone says one of the things you probably have regret is maybe you didn't move fast enough. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That, so those things go hand in hand. Exactly. Sometimes you go too fast, big right. lots of challenges, Absolutely. big mess, clean it up. Right? Yeah. So <laughs> Kyle, um, yeah. who was, I guess, about 15 when mm -hmm. I first bought my first rental mm -hmm. property, um, and even before then, when I was bringing books and leave it, I'd just leave them on the mm -hmm. on the coffee table. He, you know, my wife actually pointed out one time. She says, "Look at that," and it's like, and I looked over, and he's walking out of the room with a book that was on the coffee table. Mm -hmm. And it was one, I, I think it was Don's book, right. okay? And off to his room he went and his reading uh, skills are much better than mine. So he swallowed it within 24 hours, he read the entire book and was starting to then ask me questions and so on. But anyways, to fast forward that story, when he was going off to university, um, now this would be a couple of years later, he had said to me, when I graduate, he says, we're gonna open up an investment company. Now keep in mind, I still had my furniture yeah. business at that time and I was just, I maybe had about five, three or four properties at that time. I didn't have many. So I kind of laughed that off. But, you know, he, he went to business school, um, graduated business school. And again, by then I was now into coaching and I was um, um, had about 25 properties. He was trying to, um, he was looking at the job market at that time, mm -hmm. and that was 2008, 2009. Okay, okay. Good time. Yeah. So good he time. decided, um, well, he, and he had to finish his military training because he, he was a reservist. Yeah. So, um, so he spent the first kind of six months after he graduated mm -hmm. um, finishing or completing his, his um, military training. And then after that, with the job market being what it was, because you know, with the what was happening in the U.S., which was spilling over a little bit in in, in Canada, the jobs in finance were just weren't there. Yeah. Right. So he decided to backpack um, his way out uh, to, out west and worked in the oil rigs um, way up north. Um, you know, I think he was like. I don't know, five hours north of Edmonton. Yeah. Um, you know, and uh, he worked there for the winter and. <laughs> And that'll, that'll put some reality into things oh, for you. Absolutely. <laughs> <In> one winter. <laughs> absolutely. He came home that spring and it was like, okay. Enough is enough. You know, yeah, what are we going to do? Yeah. Right? And uh, so we, we started just talking about, you know, mm -hmm. what I was learning as far as real estate. I, I knew that what I was doing and what I achieved was doing it really with my eyes closed. I really yeah. wasn't applying a lot of attention to it. It was just, again, just organically building it. Um, it was actually relatively easy for me because I just applied, mm -hmm. you know, proper business sense. Now, yeah. that's a whole discussion in itself and, you know, where I... When I advise individuals that are getting into this business that have no business experience and no real estate experience mm -hmm. is go and get business books, learn about marketing, right. learn about financing and so on. You have to learn about the business before you can buy a business, right? Makes sense. So, and I look at a rental property as you're buying a business, Absolutely. like it or not, you're buying a business. Yeah. And it's like, business so in a box. you would never think of going and mm -hmm. buying, you know, a restaurant and not learning how to run a business. You would, mm -hmm. you know, gain those skills. So. Anyways, um, Kyle then, uh, Kyle and I just, you know, continue this discussion and, and realized that with his help, you know, he would be more my acquisitions guy, boot, boots on the ground. Um, with his help, we could partner together and now start looking for, you know, for the first time, rather than organically looking for joint venture partners, we can actually start promoting ourselves a little bit. Right. And so that was the beginning of it. And mm -hmm. um, so... 
we started um, looking at different properties, talking to different people. Mm -hmm. And so the first few properties with joint venture partners at that stage yep. now were a little bit more like what you're talking about, okay. where um, I now had a property and I had people that had expressed interest in the past. Mm. I would then, you know, kind of send everybody an email that basically yep. said, hey, you've expressed interest in the past. I've got this deal I thought you might be interested in. Let yep. me know if you'd like to got learn it. more. Got right. It. And. What was interesting about that is, is that obviously not everybody said yes. Um, and there were some deals that I just couldn't get funded and, mm -hmm. and, and would move on. But the interesting thing though, is that I was learning first off how to approach yes. people and what it is they needed to, um, to know and fear being the, the biggest one for these individuals. Mm -hmm. Um, so then how to address that in, in some of these initial emails so that they yeah. would Get, or, or help them get, get past yep. that fear almost in the initial stage. And um, the interesting thing though, is that when I would send these people then a second deal, that at that time they, they may put their hand yep. up. So it just kind of worked that way. Um, Kyle then ended up at a, an event in Edmonton, a rain mm -hmm. event in Edmonton. It was a multifamily event. And I remember him calling me and he was incredibly excited and I won't use my crude way of describing what he, how excited he was, but you know, he was incredibly excited that he just learned this amazing technique. Yeah. And he was just, because he was talking to Thomas and he was talking yeah. to Dominic and, and talking to Loeffler and, yeah. and you know, a number of different individuals that are, you know, uh, experienced at this industry. Mm -hmm. And this is where he learned all about limited partnerships yeah. and the ability to be able to create an offering memorandum and therefore then being able to present that to investors yeah. across the country and they can invest as a group. Right. Um, and that's kind of how it all started. Yeah. Um, so it wasn't really about finding a building and then right. okay. it was about forming the limited partnership. So you, you get them fund and yep. then fund goes, finds assets to deploy money. Exactly. Yeah, Our okay. type of offering is mm -hmm. one of the most difficult to mm -hmm. launch because yep. it's called a blind pool. Okay. Okay. And it's a blind pool simply because I'm looking to attract you as an investor yep. and yet there's no assets within this portfolio. Right. You're just trusting I'm going to find one. So essentially you're relying upon, um, things that you've done in the past and here's our what our portfolio has done in the past That's and this right. is our typical bread and butter what we're looking exactly. for. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. So there's a number of different approaches. There's some mm -hmm. individuals when it comes to a limited partnership will choose to find the property first. Yep. They'll tie the property up and then go and look for the investors right. and using the limited partnership structure to bring all of these individuals right. together. Well, you also, um, and I know this firsthand because I, 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 I don't know how many times I've been as a host of an event mm -hmm. and how many times yep. I had to introduce you right. and Kyle. And the, but here's, here's what I'm trying to get to is you guys always had a deal on the go. You always had something on the go, something to offer people. And that's, that, yeah. I think that's a, a critical thing is you're always in some kind of a deal flow that mm -hmm. you just never know when somebody's going to put their hand up and it could have been somebody you talked to seven years ago, they're finally now ready yeah. to, to yeah. move forward, right? It, exactly. And it, it does work that way. That's right. Nice. And, um, you know, when it comes to, you know, I, I said earlier that we're incredibly focused mm -hmm. and the more focused you become on, on your model, yeah. it's interesting how mm -hmm. deals end up you know, coming to you before you're even yep. kind of ready to right. receive it. So now if we fast forward to today's model, mm -hmm. um, uh, if now I could be completely wrong in how I'm describing this, so please correct me if I'm wrong. So so in, in essence, you almost outsource the raising of capital now to yep. a network of the exempt market dealer correct. channel. Yeah. And, and it can be quite costly. Mm -hmm. uh, and maybe we can share some numbers uh, mm -hmm. on this, or maybe we'll have to reset the cameras here in a bit. But um, so essentially you offload all the regulatory, all the marketing, in, in essence, you mark off, you outsource, no different than you would outsource property management or yeah. outsource renovations, yeah. you know, outsource raising of capital to experts that that's mm -hmm. what they do. Yes. Um, so is that the model that you're doing right now through it? Correct. Around? Okay. Correct. So if you look at, again, so to recap, yeah. um, start off by buying properties myself, yep. then, you know, friends, family start investing or mm -hmm. joint venturing with me in some deals. But again, just really being done organically. Um, jo Kyle then joins the team and mm -hmm. we kind of turn up the heat a little bit and start now 
um, taking deals and presenting them to yep. to uh, people that have expressed interest in yep. joint venturing. Um, and then the next step after that was is creating our first offering. Yep. We created our first offering and went and did the the and and it, I was incredibly naive. Yep. I thought. You know, if you look at the the stock market at that time and mutual funds and so on, they were up and down and up and down, and people were, you know, um, incredibly desperate mm -hmm. in looking for an alternative way to invest. What I didn't realize, though, is that as much as they were saying that, I didn't realize that they were locked in fear, and that that didn't mean that if you present an alternative, that they would move it. Right. And that was a tremendous lesson that I had learned mm -hmm. right at that point. We had spent, you know, over a hundred thousand, close to two hundred thousand dollars creating the structure, yep. which is the offering memorandum mm -hmm. and all the marketing materials and everything that you mm -hmm. have that you need in order to be able to present it to the public. Yep. Okay. And because um, again, the Securities Commission is is you know watching over you on mm -hmm. every step, and um, you can't misstep, yep. and um, which could be incredibly costly. So. We then, you know, I remember our first, you know, kind of conversations with the people that have over the over the years had said, if you create a limited partnership, that or they would know the language, of mm -hmm. course, as far yep. as limited partnership. But if you create something where I can put my RSPs, you've got my money. Right. So I wasn't naive in thinking I was going to get all of it, by the way, but mm -hmm. I did think I was going to get 50% of it. Right. Okay. Well, I can tell you, we were lucky if we got 10% of it, hmm. okay? It's like people are just locked in fear. So the first offering, what we were experienced with, or sorry, what we ex what we experienced was we were just entering the, what was called now the exempt market space, yes. okay? It was an unregulated space prior to 2010, okay. right? And so in 2010, the industry became more, more regulated and the Securities Commission was, was really breathing down the necks of mm -hmm. everybody involved in this space, including the ones that were raising the money. So therefore, they were incredibly um, particular on who they took on as a client. So these brokers that mm -hmm. are across Canada um, which most people in Ontario, and well, mo most people across Canada have never yep. even heard of, yep. but mostly in Ontario they haven't because of the fact that the securities laws here were so tight yes. that you know um, you had to be accredited in order, which basically means that you are high net worth individual yep. and high income earner. Yep. Okay, those rules have now changed where now the masses can invest in this, mm -hmm. but still though it's an unknown space. Yep. So you've got now these these EMDs that only represent 25 clients at a time mm -hmm. that we're trying to have them represent us and they're basically saying, you don't have the track record. And it's like, well, yeah. sure we do. I've already been in business for right. you know all my life already. Yep. And it's like, you know, but it wasn't enough. We didn't have the track record in the public space. Right. Okay. Now they don't call it public, by the way. We're just we're calling it public in this conversation mm -hmm. because for us it basically means dealing with people we didn't know. Right. Right. Yes. And but in the, you know, it, it, to you, to be politically correct, if we're talking, you know, with advisors or whatever, they don't consider this private space because, or sorry, public space. Yep. They still consider it private. They're private investments, is what they are. Right. So the. So we, we were hitting a wall. We couldn't get a broker to, mm -hmm. to represent us. And um, finally, we were able to find a small boutique shop in, uh, in, in Toronto that didn't even have a sales force. Yep. Um, so we had to put our own sales force together and they got licensed through this individual's um, brokerage. Okay. Um, and, uh, and then off we went. You know, to raise money, but it wasn't being raised for us. We had to. You, you had to we had work. to do all the heavy even, lifting. Even today, now that you probably, I think you've transitioned into a larger one of the largest one, larger ones around. Exactly. Yeah. Um, you're spending most of your time trying to get excite them to Absolutely. push it on your Absolutely. behalf. So that's your job is really to give them the tools and collaterals in order to. Because at the end of the day, they they eat what they kill. Exactly. In, in essence, and and uh, they want to make sure that they have something that can sell. That's right. Now, from the beginning. You know, it's always about establishing credibility, mm -hmm. okay? And it's about demonstrating that through your track record, okay? Mm -hmm. So the longer you're in business and the more you're showing up, yep. and you keep showing Captain up, show up, okay? Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> and you keep showing up is that, yeah. you know, and again, using the words of wisdom that I learned when I was in my early 20s, where mm -hmm. just 
do it at 150 yep. percent and opportunity will present itself mm -hmm. and that's exactly how we've been mm -hmm. able to grow this company so today you know fast forwarding to today I mean I don't I don't present to investors yep. any longer sure we get the 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 odd call and I will will yep. um, uh, you know present to 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 a group perhaps but on the most part I've got a marketing company that mm -hmm. basically handles that yep. we've got brokers um, we're we're now on four what they call shelves uh, yep. where we have four brokers that are representing us and we've got three others right now that are doing reviews on us so mm -hmm. um, you know nice. but uh, yeah uh, that whole 16 years later of working your tail off day in day out not overnight <laughs> success <laughs> absolutely uh, I gotta do one more camera reset mm -hmm. and um, the last segment I always kind of just do the next the next segment what I want to talk about is we're gonna do a little bit of recap of mm -hmm. kind of the conversation but I, I want to find out what's next I want to mm -hmm. find out what's next for you yeah um, and 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 maybe you go geez you uh, Brian's going I want to find out what's next <laughs> for me too right so so I, I I'm really uh -huh. interested in 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 hearing you've you've reinvented yourself three times mm -hmm. so what's what What's, and maybe this one's next. I don't know. I want. I want to hear from you. What's What's next for you? So we're just gonna do a real quick reset of the cameras and we'll be right back. Well, welcome back, everybody. So um, just thoroughly enjoying my conversation with Brian here. <laughs> um, interesting. I just noticed here the exciting transformation is coming to downtown Brampton. Yes. So it's, I guess it's kind of a, an interesting segue into uh, what's next for you. Like uh, so ever since you know 16 plus years and and you know up to hundred million dollars very soon mm -hmm. soon to be a hundred million yeah, dollar yeah. asset portfolio um, <laughs> you know public raising of capital now become a grandpa mm -hmm. during the time yeah. frame so yeah. so what is what's the next uh, what's the next version of Brian that we're, you're gonna be um, transforming into well first off you know on a personal on a personal yeah. side is spending as much time to organize a vacation that I would to conduct a business meeting. Okay. Okay. Um, so I've spent all my life being very, very focused on on business, mm -hmm. and um, not that I haven't had a great life and and, yeah. and enjoy a lot of things. It's just, you know, it's my my wife and I because she's the same. We we joke that, you know, it's you know, and we're we're leaving for Florida actually in a couple of weeks, and we're going down for a month, and. We don't talk about it. We'll be talking about it on yeah. the way down right. as to what we want to do. Okay. Right? It's kind of like the day of is when you start planning your vacation. Mm. So we're trying to change that. So we've had some incredible trips over the last couple of years, yeah. um, um, you know, going all through, you know, Australia and New Zealand and so on. And, you know, and uh, then last year through Asia. And, and uh, but it's trying to slow down and, and kind of focus in on some of those mm -hmm. great things to enjoy life. Um, on a business side, I'm in a great spot. Yeah. It's, um, you know, working here and working within the company, um, I don't need to be here every day of the week. I have my responsibilities and those responsibilities can be done from anywhere in the world. Mm -hmm. um, give me a laptop and a cell yep. phone and, and I'm good. Um, you know, and so I'm able to continue to push things along and because really that's my job is I'm yep. pushing people along. I'm not a lawyer. I'm not an accountant, mm -hmm. but I'm working with them to push things along, getting mm -hmm. things to the next, you know, next step. Right. I, you just said something golden that along that entire journey that you talked about, I guarantee that when it was time to take the next organic step, that's mm -hmm. the word we're going to probably the most of the again, yeah. is that you just relied upon, let the lawyers go draft up the documents, yeah. let the, you know, the acquisition team go find what they need to do, yeah. right? And just stay in your lanes. Right? Yeah, Everybody, well, what my brilliance is, yeah, this yeah. is, I mean, it, it's, it's, it's interesting when I recovered, when I uncovered what my brilliance is. My yeah. brilliance is, is assembling really smart mm -hmm. people, yes. much smarter than I am, mm -hmm. but putting them all together in the sequence that need to be put together at the time they need to be put together mm -hmm. in order to create something brilliant. And it's like, and because I am, you know, how does my son say it? I measure, he says, he was talking to a contractor once. He says, you gotta be careful because you're gonna be working with him all the time. Yeah. He measures efficiency by the second, mm -hmm. right? So, you know, <laughs> okay. right? So, I mean, I hold people accountable and I'm not exactly, probably not not mm -hmm. voted, you know, to be the most pleasant person you to work get, with at times. You won't get the congenial award? <laughs> no, I mean, but but I, I, get, so, I get so focused, I, I sometimes, 
sometimes forget that there's, you know, human beings that are mm -hmm. working alongside me that that maybe are not appreciating the way I'm doing things. But uh, and I do try to change that, by the way. But um, but anyways, the role I get to play now is I get to help in keeping some of these things push being pushed along, of mm -hmm. course. But I also am able to because the staff don't see me as their immediate boss, mm -hmm. I'm able to now create a, a coaching program here and working with the staff from, from yeah. that capacity. And we're having a lot of fun at it yeah. and they really enjoy it because they, they, they end up seeing how how different we think, yeah. um, you know, where we, for example, we give staff off, we give them Fridays off throughout the summer. Right. Why do we do that? Because we believe that you worked to live, not mm -hmm. live to work, yeah. right? And, you know, it's, it's just kind of creating programs for the staff um, to really make them feel a part of the team and really give them the, the ability to be able to contribute to the future success yeah. of the company and not you know, kind of working for a dictatorship. Well, it's you, you're just creating the next uh, next level of leaders mm -hmm. and inspiring leaders. And and I and I had a little um a little smirk. I don't know if you could see. I had a little smirk when you were talking about but how how ironic. And you mentioned it earlier. I'm just going to reiterate how ironic that um, for something that was such a big chip to you mm -hmm. of the the educated smart <laughs> exactly, people yeah. that you're how many of them are working for you? That's in, right. In essence, yeah. Yeah, right. absolutely. So, so absolutely. well, congratulations. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> well done. Yeah, well, and it's not lost on me. Like yeah. I say, it's like I do get a big smirk on my own face sometimes yeah. when this is going, when it's actually happening. Yeah. And Mr. It's, PhD, and in my world, you know, PhD stands for pig-headed determination, mm -hmm. right, in the yeah. entrepreneur space. But when, when somebody, you know, fancy education comes and they're saying, well, Brian, what, what do you think I should do? <laughs> well, an exercise that Stephanie had me do, which I, I'm going to share with, with everybody, because I think it was... Uh, you know, for me, it was the 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 crossing point. Mm -hmm. You know, is where she had me do this exercise where it was like, you know, take a piece of paper and pen, and, and didn't she didn't suggest I do it on my computer? And it's like, and just write down, just empty your brain as to, you know, what is it that you bring to the table? Mm -hmm. Who who are you? Yeah. You know, and so if if you were kind of being interviewed, for example, and some of you say like, so. So what? It's like, mm -hmm. you know, why invest with you as opposed to investing with me is yeah. really where, where she was kind of going with that. And, you know, and she, she already knew me well enough that mm -hmm. I was going to come at it at a very high, high approach yeah. and, and not really appreciate some of the little things that I'm doing that yeah. are huge. Okay. So, you know, after, you know, after I had done the exercise and I sent it to her and she kind of looked at, she kind of not threw it back, but kind of tossed it back in the sense mm -hmm. that nowhere near as deep as I'm looking for, yeah. you know? And she then gave me some suggestions though. She yeah. did kind of guide me into her, where she was kind of trying to take me in as far as the path. And it was incredible. It was an incredible experience when you start realizing just the little things you do. So for example, I see no value, because I never really thought about it, of course, but I see no value that I had read, you know, you know, like, tens of books or, yep. you know, hundreds of books on, on business and yep. improving myself and, and real estate. And, you know, that, that didn't, I didn't see that as something worthy of putting down as yep. a, as a, you know, as a skill set. Yep. Um, or the fact that, you know, I had spent hours going to, you know, rain meetings yep. and, you know, and, and, and other meetings and, and again, seeing no value in that, or the fact that I had contact information of some of the most influential people in real estate, simply because I was part of, yep. you know, of an organization. And again, all of these things is what she was looking for mm -hmm. in the sense that this is the sum of you yep. when it, when we're talking about business and what you're coming through the door with. Yep. And it's like, so an individual that's choosing to say, you know, sit at home and watch the football game on a Sunday afternoon where I'm, you know, going to a seminar and learning about real estate, you know, it's like not that either one is good or bad as much as that's why this individual mm -hmm. would most likely invest with this individual, yes. right? And so that's where, you know, really started to gain my confidence in those well, skills. And, and as you say that, I, and I'm only speaking for myself, I can't speak for you, I just know I, I feel the same way. And sometimes we diminish our accomplishments, mm -hmm. and I and I only speak for myself. I was doing a lot of deep inner work, very similar to what you yeah. talked about. Is it comes down to an insecurity? It comes down to your Absolutely. own personal insecurity that what you have to offer people don't want. Yeah, and and maybe that comes from we can honestly goodness we could have an entire 
another interview on that whole but, thing but too. But the, the, right? the, the thing is, though, is that as much as we could have a conversation yeah. about, about that, we just did. Yes. You know, because yeah, really, you know, if, if you're hearing my story, it's mm -hmm. a very big part of the story is really about, um, you know, the, the, ca the, the money that we're raising today. Yes. Okay. Let me tell you that, you know, what, I, what I'm hearing today from, from people from the outside is yeah. that, you know, when they introduce themselves to us and are looking to do business with us, they say, you know, um, I just keep hearing that you guys do what you say you do. And I, I turned to actually a, a, an individual that's a, that's a little younger than me, mm -hmm. but still old enough to appreciate yeah. that. Do you not remember when that was just standard? <laughs> you know, <laughs> that was it's the, like that was the way of living. Right? <laughs> well, exactly. I grew up in that house, and I guess I drew that. I, I, I drank that Kool Aid. Yeah. I'm so appreciative that my parents, you know, and my dad was was quite a hard. I, I won't, I won't uh, use the uh, the ass word <laughs> yeah, after that, but I mean, like he was a really strict man, and I'm yeah. really glad that he instilled that value in me. Mm -hmm. That if the words leave your lips. Yeah. Regardless of the consequence, you now have to complete that task, yep. and you know, and and I and I've tried to live by that. Yeah. And so the interesting thing is, is that, you know, credibility is incredibly important. If you're going to start, if you if you have the inkling of, you know, going and developing a limited partnership, mm -hmm. if you're not credible, then you're going to have a tremendous challenge in this. Yep. It's yep. that our growth has been simply because we keep doing. We keep showing up yep. and we keep doing what we say we're going to wow. do. Yeah, and, and guys, if you've been watching a lot of the modules I'm creating, and I, I'll share you right off the bat, one of the, one of the greatest skill sets of a, a person raising capital is a person who can tell a good story, mm -hmm. like who can, who can instill people to transform, to get off their assets, yeah. to invest with you. Mm -hmm. That is a powerful skill set. The only thing that trumps that is the ability to make the story come true. Yes. Right? Yes. That is more important Absolutely. is the is the execution of the story. And I tell you what, if you mirror, if you match amazing story with execution on story and being open and honest and vulnerable and everything and there's gonna be missteps and but just be honest and clean them up yeah. along the way you match those two honest there, there's nothing stopping you. You're, un, right. you're you're unstoppable. And you know the ironic thing is and you said it is um Things that is common sense is not common practice. That's right. Right? Yeah. And you don't know how much you can separate yourself just by doing what you say you're going to do exactly. uh, out there in the marketplace. And the other part yeah. of it is educating too, of course. Yeah. It's like, so we raised our, we raised about $6 million mm -hmm. um, in our first offering. Yeah. And that was where I cut my teeth in this whole industry. And because that's where I first started dealing with the public, let's yes. call it, okay, although it's still a private asset. Um, but what I had to learn was, is helping people get out of their own way. Mm -hmm. So helping them with fear, helping them with knowledge. It's like, so take a, an individual that wants to invest in real estate and feels for a second that, well, but if I invest with you, then I'm, I don't have, you know, capital to invest, mm -hmm. you know, myself um, or, you know, so what I'd help people do is understand that for maybe perhaps they have um, registered funds, yep. which are not easily be able able to use in your own investment mm -hmm. legally, <laughs> and so um, so that was a means for them to perhaps maybe diversify their portfolio by 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 investing their yep. RSPs or their TFSAs into an offering like ours allows them then to participate in a real estate investment. Mm -hmm. um, also, it, it could be a means of being able to diversify your portfolio. So yep. although I was a real estate investor and had rental properties myself, I wasn't working in the Hamilton market at that time yeah. and wanted exposure in Hamilton, so I joint ventured with a couple of individuals that Absolutely. were right. in, in the Hamilton area. So it, it's really about educating people as well and, mm -hmm. and having the patience to, to and, and the desire. I mean, yeah. I enjoy it. I enjoy educating people. I enjoy, nice. you know, kind of sharing what, uh, what I've learned. Well, I got two things I want to just kind of wrap up here, and I will wrap because I knew we should <laughs> get out of your, out of your officers. You're, you're a busy man and got lots to do. Um, um, but before I forget, where can people um, um, get in contact with you if they're interested and they like what they've heard or maybe they want to check out some performance mm -hmm. uh, of things or where, where would be the best place to get a hold of you at? Probably the best place to go to is our website, yep. which is uh, www.polisinvestments, that's P-U-L-I-S, yep. which is my last name. Um, investments.com okay. um, and from there they can see a video of um, mm -hmm. 
kind of who we are and what we've done and what we're doing um, and uh, learn, you know, some basic information yep. of, of, of who we are. Um, and also there's a contact us kind of section there where they can communicate with us. Right um, and, uh, and, and I always welcome phone calls. I love mm -hmm. talking to people that, uh, that are, are, are looking for some information, not just to invest with us, but also mm -hmm. for them to take it to another level. A little level. bit of direction too, at times yeah, too. Like I love that, it. That's yeah. what you love to do. Um, I'm gonna offer you something here is, um, before we do wrap up and I'm gonna ask you, the last question I'm gonna ask you, give you a little bit if you wanted some thought, mm -hmm. but um, is you know a final inspira inspiring message if somebody's watching this and maybe just to maybe feel a little stuck, well, that'd mm -hmm. be the final question. But what I wanted to offer to you is um, just some outsider looking in feedback. Mm -hmm. And I have always viewed what you have done from the best way I could describe it would be classy. It's, Thank you. It's, um, it is professional. It is nothing ever frenzied or or fanatic or you know you got your ducks in a row mm -hmm. is the best is one of the best ways I can describe it, and um, and it's always been a guidepost for myself to kind of measure a professional professionalism and a classiness of the materials of just the way you present yourself and the way you just hold it and. And I guess it's the best way to say is I've been a fan of everything that you've ever done, and I and I know that's by design of what you've mm. done, and I'm 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 honored that I've had a chance to to get to know you, <laughs> thank and, you, and and see what this has been about because it's just I guess the easiest way to describe it is I, other than just saying it's probably some of the best of the best materials I've seen put out there. Thank you very much. Class, I really appreciate class that. Is the best way I can say it. Yeah, thank you. I right. appreciate that. It's. You know, I, I guess, you know, it's always been to try to hold ourselves to a higher mm -hmm. standard. Um, we don't want to, and again, where the organic part was coming yep. from as much as that, I don't want to deal with people in business that don't want to deal with us. Yeah, brilliant. You know, and um, that came right from our furniture industry as well. It's like mm -hmm. when we'd have, you know, people, you know, complain. We'd always worked very hard in trying to figure out, it was always analyzing, what is that complaint? So yeah. forget about what they're saying. Yes. What are they really saying? What is the real issue? Yeah. And what can we do to improve, right? right. And so, um, you know, so yeah, I appreciate those words. No, Thank you. They come from the heart. Thank so, you. And as you know, that's where I, I wear my heart on my sleeve <laughs> with, with, with most things. And sometimes I've been accused of being too soft and too nice, but hey, you I never get you're... accused of being that, but I live my, <laughs> my, my life on my sleeve too, but it's usually because I'm too blunt. <laughs> uh, so, so final thing, and, and you know, pick whichever camera, maybe this one over here has got okay. the nice thing. It's, what what um, final words of wisdom or advice would you offer, some inspiration for somebody who's maybe just, maybe they're just a little stuck and maybe just uh, help take the next step forward? Wow, that's, that's pretty loaded because I can go at that from a number of different ways, but I would think that um, you know, believe in yourself, mm -hmm. you know, really believe in yourself. And, um, you know, as I, as I kind of share with individuals today is that being self-aware and knowing what your skills are and, you know, and being aware to the point of being honest with yourself in, in, in that I'm not really good at, at, at certain things. And therefore then assembling people or a team around you to be able to, you know, to move those things forward. Um, and do what you say you're going to do. You know, over the years, again, I had the privilege of being a part of, a, a, a part of RAIN and going to the meetings all the time. And, you know, it would frustrate me when I would meet people that every time I would see them, and it could be months in between each time, they were presenting a different investment strategy to me, mm. to the one that they were talking about before. So I never got that, I, I could never really, if, if I was talking to Russ and Russ mm -hmm. said he had some money and he wanted to put it in, you know, um, horse stables, for example, well, I could never refer you because I didn't know that you were doing that. Um, mm -hmm. Because, you know, I, that may be a poor example, but yeah. my point simply is, is that by walking into a room and saying, I specialize in X, and even though perhaps 
you don't really feel that you're a specialist in X, but you are learning everything you can. So you certainly more would know more than most people in the audience yep. at that particular time. And that you're doing everything you can to have credibility within that and learning everything there. But it's so much easier than for people around to remember that person specializes in X. So now when they're dealing with their friends or family yep. and they say that they would like to invest in horse stables, well, you just finished saying that it's what you specialize yes. in. So it's much easier than to, to kind of refer people to you. So it's kind of really, I guess all I'm saying is, is that know yourself, know what, you, what you're good at, what you're bad at, and assemble the people around you that can, can help you in, in, yep. in that endeavor. And, um, and being clear, being clear yes. and focused on a path. So what is that path? And uh, again, for me, at first it was student housing. Yep. Um, then it was duplexes, triplexes, and so on. Then it was apartment buildings. Yep. And do it all organically and give yourself, give it 150%. Exactly. Right on. Thank you Thank very you. much. Thank you, Brian. Thank you. All right, guys, so wonderful interview here with Brian. Uh, wow, there's so much, so many lessons. And I will do a real quick recap uh, after this video as well on, on the outro. So, guys, sure hope you enjoy it. The next lesson, the next video is coming up right away. Okay, bye for now. Thank you. I sure hope you enjoyed this in-depth training video. And I applaud you for sticking around right to the very end. I believe in people that show up put in the work, put in the time and effort should be rewarded. If you're interested in taking the next step, if you're interested in going deeper and mastering what you just learned about in this training video, I encourage you to check out the Raising Capital Academy. So if you have found that you've received some value from the YouTube channel, or maybe you've listened to a podcast, you're only scratching the surface. That truly is just one-tenth of 1% of all the content and materials that have been created that are waiting for you on the other side. So I encourage you to check out the Raising Capital Academy. There's more than 100 plus hours of video content, audio content, exclusive training material for those that are interested in taking the next step, those that are interested in going towards mastery, those that are interested in moving forward with velocity. So I would encourage you wherever you're watching this video, around this video will be a link where you can check out all the details of the Raising Capital Academy. After you've checked out all the details on that page and you're interested in moving forward with Velocity, click on the link that will take you towards the application. This is by application only. This is a community program and is for serious action takers only. So if you want to step up your game, if you have goals and dreams and aspirations for more, if you'd like to make a difference in the financial futures of the most important people in your life, I highly encourage you to check out the Raising Capital Academy. Click on that link and you'll be taken to the next step in the process to see if you qualify to take the next step forward for you. Hope to see you on the other side. Bye for now. Hey, I sure hope you enjoyed this video. If you are interested in moving forward with Velocity, if you're interested in being a successful real estate investor, only two simple next steps from here. Number one, below where you're watching this, there will be an opportunity for you to subscribe. And over here will be a hand-selected video for you to keep moving forward. Continue your journey forward. Just click on over here for that hand-selected video for you, and we'll see you on the other side. Thank you very much.